Hi guys, good morning. I wanted to start this video by reading something for you all that really resonates with me um, and that again shows us how crap fake spirituality really is. And it's this, it says here, it says, it's not about letting it go. It's about letting it in. It's about letting it deep. It's about letting it through. It's about being true to your feelings. It's about giving your experiences the attention they deserve. That may take a moment. It may take years. The trick is not to shame your need to hold on to what has yet to be resolved. Let it go is the mantra of the self-avoidance feigning resolution because they lack the courage or the preparedness to face their own feelings. Let's not play that game. Let's let things in and through. Let's let things be until they are fully and truly ready to shift. Let's let it grow in the transformation at its heart. We write our story by fully living it, not by letting it go before its time. I felt that so strongly reverberate throughout my being and I thought, right, I need to read that out to you guys. Um, because in the new age we're told, oh, you have to let it go, just, just, they use that word a lot, just this and just that, just let it go and just let it be and just don't look at it and don't feel it and whatnot. And of course, that is all wrong that makes you repress, repress and feel guilty and feel ashamed. <clears throat> but the point comes where in this shadow work um, where something is ready to shift. So you're on the threshold and something has grown out or so it seems out of proportion it's so big and so dark and so overwhelming and you feel completely trapped. That's generally threshold territory I find and that's when, and I'm going to read this to you as well, when a pattern or a trauma rather is finally coming to an end, especially one that's been held in your body for a long time because all this trauma is held in the body and I'll get to that in a minute. So. Sorry, I'll do that again. When a pattern is finally coming to an end, especially one that's been held in your body for a long time, that's also when you'll face the most fear and the most resistance and the most hate and the most rage because being set free actually feels incredibly uncomfortable and unsafe in relation to continuing to play out what you've always known. And again, I thought that was very relevant because <clears throat> that is how that particular cookie crumbles, isn't it, people? It's what we've always known. It's been our normal. We are continually traumatized. This entire reality is one big MK Ultra esque lab. I've said this before how they have different countries that literally really are different experiments going on all at the same time see what, what we can do to them, see what we can do with the Chinese people to make them really conform, to really conform and to make them, you know, rat on each other and, and, and let's see what we social credit score, ooh. And you look at the Chinese people now and wow, it's like Day of the Walking Dead. And I don't think they were always like that. Let's not forget, um, you know, lots of interesting things have come to China, have come from China. Um, they, they were very creative, they had great cultural shit going on and now they've been reduced to zombies. Um, we all know what's happened to the German people. This is what they do. They do this. It's all about... It's all about ramping up trauma in different ways in different ways all the time to see how it affects the target population, how it, 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 um, what's the word I was going to use and then forgot, flipping egg. Um, 
the, the, the human evolution has, has been in their grimy paws for a long, long time. And it's all about creating maximum trauma, maximum stress at all times. At all times. That's what we found ourselves in. That's what re reinforces the deepest wounds that's there at the very beginning of it all. So, hmm. It's not a case of, um, well, just let that go. Just let it go. Because, you see, that isn't even possible. It isn't even possible to just let that go. And then when you, when you really struggle, I must let it go. I mustn't have these thoughts and I mustn't have these feelings. I mustn't have this experience. I'm a failure. I'm such a loser. It's all my fault. That's when it becomes even more ingrained and you suffer even more. You resist, you resist because, oh, by your attempt to let it go, you're actually not letting it go, if you know what I mean. You're not letting it be resolved. You're not letting it be healed. And that is what they want. Because it's in, it's, it's interesting. To me, it always seems that in this trauma-based mind control circus, the healing lies within it because <clears throat> it's when all that shit when, when in the awakening when you become acutely painfully aware of what is actually really going on in this world and how it's affecting you how it has affected you how it has created this massive black hole within you you then start to also notice with that that the stresses and the strains and the duress of it all actually brings it up. It makes you more aware of your inner wound, your deepest wound. And the more you are aware of it, the more you're able to process it and heal it by being with it, by acknowledging it and saying, you know, this is truth. Here I am. This is how I feel. All my life I was told that I shouldn't feel that way. All my life I was told that I, I was somehow dysfunctional and defective for feeling this way. There, there was something wrong with me because everybody else is so happy. They're not happy at all. They're just pretending to be. And so you acknowledge it and say, yes, here I am. This is how I feel. I am really, really angry because all my life I thought everything was my fault somehow. It was all my fault and I deserved this. And then you realize, no, I don't deserve this. These fuckers, I mean, they've created a world where everybody is perpetually sick, perpetually dying, perpetually weak in mind, in body, in soul, in spirit. Weakened and weakened and weakened. They detract, detract, detract from everything that we are. It is a full frontal assault and yet the healing lies within it because in the awakening, in the awareness of what is really going on lies the seed of the healing and that's the beauty of it I find because when shit happens to you now you realize ah this is what's going on inside of me. Look at me reacting like this and look at me, look at how this is making me feel. Look at how this is making me behave. Wow, so that's what's happening inside of me. That was, ah, I see it now. You, you begin to really see and understand the trauma and the PTSD and the rage and the insanity, the part of you that's literally gone insane with the, ins the, the, the chaos and the gaslighting when you gaslit throughout your entire life, you know, you do go insane. Of course you do. Duh. Right? And it's in the understanding of all of that, that somehow that the healing happens. It happens gradually, layer after layer, as you face all these nuances within yourself, as they're triggered by the external insanity. And that is how the healing happens. That is the magic. 
That is why the New Age doesn't want us to do that. It doesn't want us to do that. It wants to circumvent all of that and just be happy. Just let it go, let it go. There is obviously a behavioral aspect to that where certain triggers come up where you have to make a choice as to whether to let go, meaning I am not going to react the way I have always reacted to this because I know that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results is insanity. So I'm not going to react this way, but I'm going to instead choose to sit here with the feeling that it's aroused within me and by the by work through that and thereby let it go. That is letting go for real. That is a good type of letting go. That is important. Sometimes you're not able to do that yet. You still want to react and you do. So you think, oh, I've made a mistake, but it isn't really a mistake because it helps you to let it go maybe the next time or the time after that. Eventually you'll get it, you will. It has to spin out. All this shit has within us has to be spun out one way or another. It just has to be. Um, it is the only way to heal in this, within this insane asylum. We can't leave the insane, insane asylum until we're, well, sane. And so we have to be in it, heal it, and then get out. <clears throat> I mean, they say things, they say things like, um, you see the world as you are, or it's just a matter of perception. Well, as in, you know, somebody, some, 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 some new age guru. Oh, the world is such a wonderful place and it's, it's a paradise. It's the Garden of Eden. And yeah, for this particular person, it might be seeing as they've made millions and live in a big mansion in California by the beach, blindsiding everything that's actually going on in the world and, and not looking at the deepest wounds in any way, shape or form. But the last time I checked, no, that is not how it happens. We have to look at the core issues of it all. It has to be looked at, it has to be acknowledged, because it's all an external representation of the deepest wound, which lies at the center of it all. Perhaps, in a sense, the deepest wound is the dark generator, because it's like a magnet it attracts these attacks. It does make us a target, as it were. Mm. Because you find that, say, for example, certain toxic people are attracted to you when you're still engaged in specific types of reactivity. It's as if, like, I've called, I call it the mark. You have the mark. You're this really sensitive empath and you're a bit of a doormat and a people pleaser. So you attract narcissists, you see? So you're a magnet. But when you learn to disengage and to react, well, actually rather respond differently, that changes and those people will just disappear. They just slither off and that's it, goodbye. You never see them again. Because they realize that you're no longer playing the game. You're no longer their quarry. So they go off and look for some other poor soul to take advantage of. So there is that. If consciousness creates reality, and there is a dark, nebulous force that seeks to create, like terraforming, a certain reality in which it lives. It is the only place in which it can live. It cannot live anywhere else. It lives in hell, so it wants to create perpetually. It wants to create hell. It uses our consciousness to do that, because our consciousness is diseased, it's sick. And the deepest wound is the mechanism it uses 
to channel itself through us into this world. Hence we have all these people doing its work for it. If you, if you look at the so-called elites, you look at these people, really observe them, you'll, you'll notice how utterly diseased they are. They look diseased, they look twisted and contorted. They're ugly, they're hideous, they're monstrosities. Because they are the most heavily um, infected people. They do the most monst absolutely vile, vile creatures, you know. We know this. Um, and of course that is all virtual. That isn't actually real. And a lot of us have real trouble getting to terms with that. Because from the get-go we're given to believe that this world is real. It's all bricks and mortar. It's real. And from that mindset, of course, nothing will ever change and evil will always win, of course, because they are masters of this bricks and mortar world. It's of their creation. It is of the creation of darkness. It reigns there. But when you become more and more aware of the fact that it isn't real, and that it's actually always changing and shifting, and that your consciousness impacts it, slanting towards the negative or the positive, but it has an impact, then you realize that healing your consciousness is what it's all about. And so that is what we do and that's what we take responsibility for. And it isn't about letting it go and pretending it isn't there and it isn't about feeling guilty because you've had a negative thought and that will create negativity, law of attraction, oh boy. Now you must be terrified because you've had a negative thought, so something bad is going to happen. <laughs> Or you've done something bad, so you've incurred bad karma. Something bad's going to happen to you because you deserve that. It's all your fault. It's all bullshit, people. Mm. So don't worry about getting it wrong or strive to get it right. But just accept everything that you are here now. All these uncomfortable, harrowing emotions and weird, sketchy thoughts that aren't your own. The fact that your health isn't good. The fact that your mental health is in tatters. It always was, you know. It always was. It isn't like that just happened recently. You're just aware of it now. Because that is what the deepest wound is. It's the fragmentation of our psyche. But I don't know anything. I'm nothing. I'm nobody. So please tell me what to do. And then you get a, a hundred people telling you what to do. And every single thing they tell you to do is conflicting and different and wonky. So you're even more confused. And you're even more in tatters. And you're, you feel even more broken and even more confused. That's gaslighting. Do this. No, no, do that. No, no, do that. You, 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 you couldn't find your ass with your, you, you, you know, you, you just completely, uh, I don't know what to do, I don't know who I am, I don't know where I'm going, I don't know what's going on, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, everything around us is designed to do just that. All the subliminal messaging in ads and in films and it's in, in TV series, even in books. Um, you know, that's why we have institutions like the Tavistock, because they... They, they do that for a reason. Popular music in the 60s was all about that. Yeah, it's sad because we like some of the music, but basically it was all there to manipulate our psyche, really. Most music is. Um, countries. Different populations targeted a specific way to see what effect it might have. Yeah. Lies, lies upon lies by the mainstream media that time and time again now I find out, we find out is a complete and utter fabrication. The constant threat of violence and war and chaos and oh, climate change, we're all going to die. The ice age is coming. Polar shifts. But it's not real, people. It isn't. It isn't. If evil was that powerful, we'd already have had World War III and World War IV. 
we'd be living in a fucking wasteland and everybody would be chipped. People wouldn't have any free will left. We'd all be like automatons. It would be a bit like The Purge. I haven't seen that film, but I've heard what it's all about. I'm not going to watch it because it's putrid filth. It's films like that. They love, they love that. That is the kind of world they want, you know. <laughs> and they've taken, basically, they've taken a Jungian concept there. Yes. Very clever. If you want to understand more about that, watch um, season two of The Sinner. That's actually pretty good. And there's a lot of insightful uh, wisdom there to be found. Watch it carefully, but you know, extract the pearls. Um, it, it, it's like I said, it's a full frontal assault and it's very hard to navigate this realm because our deepest wound will continue to tell us that we cannot trust ourselves, that we cannot trust our intuition and that we're doomed. And that is the biggest lie because it's the opposite. The opposite is true. That even whilst in the midst of this total chaos, even in the midst of this total full frontal assault, chaos, nightmare scenario, we are, he we are healing. We are totally healing. We are putting in the work. We are feeling, becoming more and more aware of what lies within us. Working through it, purging, cleansing, alchemizing. We see the traps. We know how to avoid them. Sometimes we don't avoid them. We don't know how, but that's how we learn how to avoid them. Do you see what I mean? It's by getting it wrong, you end up getting it right. So the seed to the healing and the transformation lies within the darkness, because as the darkness happens to you and you get it wrong, you learn to navigate, you learn to get it right. It does purge out the crap. I find that amazing and that is what gives me great, a great sense of, <clears throat> of yes, of the great cosmic yes. Their days are numbered and they know it. I see signs everywhere of shifts happening. The whole evil nebulous arena of child abuse, child trafficking, all of that is coming out more and more and more. Um, and watch the rats scurrying as it were. They're on the run, they're afraid, they're worried. It's all falling to bits, people. No, there is, we haven't as yet had a World War III and it's not going to happen. Climate change is something that they are actually creating. They're creating it, they're spraying lithium in the skies. And yet, we curiously, I find, find ourselves unaffected by it because if we clean up our consciousness, it doesn't affect us. There is protection there. There is great protection in the healing. And there is great guidance. And I have faith in that. So despite the fact that, yes, often enough I feel like crap, I also know it's meaningful. I also know it's about healing. It's a great big motherfucking detox. So I stay the course and I have faith in that. Because that's where it's at. It cannot be any other way. What I've also felt very strongly is that it isn't a case of, oh, and now it is healed and the world is a bit better. It isn't like that because it has to go back all the way to the beginning. Because all the torture of these children, all the torture of these animals, all the the dark deeds that were done, all of that has to literally be erased. It has to be undone so that it is as if it never happened at all. That is the only way that reset can take place. And I think that's ultimately what it's about. That is what reset is. We extract the pearls from the experience. There is a memory and there is an, an, an innate Oh, how can I? Hmm. There is an innate 
knowing and understanding something we have learned something we have gained something that has been has been experienced and yet at the same time it has it is all undone so that all that trauma is literally resolved is is healed all the way back to the beginning of it None of it can be left to fester in any way or shape or form. All will be healed. All of it. Everything that ever happened that was dark and evil. Because that is what the virus is. And it has to be completely and utterly dissolved. Poof. Reset. That's what I feel. I've been a bit backwards in coming forwards with my vision of, of what it is because I always feel a lot of people would just think I'm nuts. Um, but fuck it, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore because um, that doesn't serve any purpose other than the dark's purpose. And I'm not doing that. That's not what this channel is about. Um, it is how I feel very strongly and... I get these insights and these visions and I'm showing what's going on and what's happening and why and where it's going. And that is very pivotal to it all. We heal it here within ourselves. The healing, the seeds of the healing lie within us. They lie within the world. They lie within the darkness. And the reset is about it, the healing, going all the way back and coming from the back, from there, forwards and like a great big tidal wave of love, resetting everything. So there is no more trauma, there is no more the deepest wound sitting there festering. It cannot be so because it would simply restart the whole story the whole thing again it would just happen again and it has to be dealt with once and for all because enough is enough i think that's all i have to say today mm. <laughs> have a good day everybody okay and just bear with it know that we are healing we are we're doing the work We are warriors of the light. <laughs>